welcome back to Content Cathedral. I'm C. Alex Smith, and this is part four of the story development series. In this episode, we will examine the three components or arcs of story. We will also look at the long-standing war between character versus narrative-driven arc. We'll examine how conflict drives narrative arc, and we'll do a conflict analysis exercise to create a tense narrative arc to accompany last week's character arc. Story is about change. In any story, three things can change. The situation, the character, or the meaning of the story. At least one of these must change for it to be a story, but more than one or all three can exhibit change. Strong narrative arc leads to a fast-paced book with lots of tension, but it does not demand much from the reader. Since the reader does not have to think about the action, they are less engaged and may not remember the details of the book after they are done with it. They will only remember they enjoyed reading it and will likely buy a second book by the same author. Because the reader is less engaged, these books often last on the bestseller list only a few months. Strong character arc gives the reader strong emotions. These emotions make them more likely to identify with the main character and therefore form a bond with that character. Because this demands more engagement, the reader is more likely to remember details of the novel, so these novels have a better longevity, sometimes selling well for many years. Strong themes demand the most from readers. Readers who like this challenge often like to share thoughts about the books they read, and these novels lend themselves to discussion groups. When novels like these are well done, they have the greatest longevity and are called classics, like The Great Gatsby or The Grapes of Wrath. Stories where the character does most of the changing are called character-driven or literary. In movies, they are usually made as independent films, and in nonfiction, it is usually called journalism. The last exercise that we did was mostly about guiding your story through a simple character change. There is more to writing character-driven story than just planning the change, but that is enough for now. Most stories in today's market have some character change as the story unfolds, but by no means are all successful stories required to have a character arc. In some stories, the character does not change. Only the situation the character finds him or herself in changes. These stories are usually referred to as narrative-driven or plot-driven. Sometimes they are called commercial or genre fiction usually with a dismissive curl of the lips. In screenwriting, these are the studio films. In nonfiction, they are sometimes called narrative nonfiction. The classic example of genre fiction is in the 1950s and 70s TV serials, Gilligan's Island, Bewitched, Star Trek. The situation changed slightly every week, but the characters remained true to themselves. This led to cliché characters and predictable plot lines, thus the sneer that goes with genre fiction. Yet writing this type of fiction in today's market is just as challenging and complex as literary fiction. Modern consumers of genre fiction will no longer allow predictable plots and cliché characters. Writing something unique in a purely narrative plot has become some of the most challenging work today. For those of you who fix other writers with a stare down the length of your nose when they tell you they are writing thrillers or romances, and then announce that you only write character-driven literary fiction, consider this. Do you have a cell phone in your pocket? Well, that's there because a 1960s serial that was completely plot-driven Star Trek inspired the developers of the cell phone, the MRI, and the talking computer with voice recognition. What has pure character-driven story, story where nothing happens externally but all the action is in the dramatic, heart-wrenching change of the character inspired? Well, nothing, because nothing external happens. 
So get off the genre people's back. Everyone has the right to write what they love and not to feel bad about it. In truth, this discussion about character versus narrative-driven plot is somewhat in jest. The argument is clearly outdated. There is almost no pure character-driven fiction being consumed anymore, and purely narrative fiction is not as common as it used to be. Most modern fiction, even TV serial fiction, contain elements of both narrative arc and character arc. The consumers of modern fiction almost demand it. Most fiction is on the spectrum of character and narrative change. However, plot-driven fiction lives on, and this year, most of the nominees for Best Picture at the Oscars were heavily weighted toward narrative arc, including the Best Picture, Spotlight. Other narrative drive Oscar nominees include The Martian and Mad Max. Brooklyn was about a woman adjusting to becoming an American and seems to me to be more of a character arc. While Room had a strong narrative arc and character arc. So what about the third arc, theme? Theme answers the question, why should the reader care? What does this mean to me? It plays on universal human values and makes the reader see his or her own world differently. It is the most difficult arc to master, but those stories with well-done themes have the most longevity. Unfortunately, theme cannot be worked in the plotting phase. Trying to do so makes the story sound preachy. Theme is something that gets honed in the second and third draft phase. If we continue through the editing process, I'll have some exercises for you to clarify your theme. Last time, the exercise encouraged you to come up with a basic character arc. Today's exercise will hone the narrative arc. The exercise comes from Guide to Screenplay Structure. Screenplays and novels are structured essentially the same. Dan O'Bannon wrote Aliens, one of the most tense, fast-paced movies ever filmed. O'Bannon felt that narrative arc revolves around conflict. In order for there to be conflict, there must be a disagreement between two parties. That means the main character must be seeking something, a goal, and there must be opposition to the goal. Frequently, there are several conflicts, a main conflict, as well as several subplot conflicts. This exercise will encourage you to look at all of your conflicts. Like the character arc, you have to set up the conflict. Introduce your main character goals, opposition to the goals, the conflict itself, and the stakes, if the goal is not achieved, so the reader knows why the main character doesn't just walk away. At the end of Act 1, or approximately the first quarter to third of your novel, these forces coalesce to make the conflict clear to the reader. Entering into the main conflict of the story must be a one-way door, so the main character cannot reverse directions. This is a commitment for the main character of some kind. In Act 2, the conflict puts increasing pressure on the character. If there is a character-driven component, this provides the catalyst to change, and at the midpoint, the main character sees that he must change. The tension continues to ramp up, and the conflict increases until a point of no return. At the point of no return, direct personal conflict is inevitable. The climax in the future is fully foreshadowed and becomes a foregone conclusion for the reader. In Act 3, the forces collide, and in the character-driven component, the main character exhibits the character change discovered in Act 2. All conflicts run their course to their resolution. As homework for this video, do Snowflake Developer exercise number 3. You can either answer the questions for each conflict or fill in the graph at the bottom of the sheet. Next time, we will look at what makes well-rounded versus flat characters and do an exercise to make all support characters in your story seem well-rounded. If you have stumbled on this lesson by accident and are not a member of Content Cathedral, you may join by writing me at calexsmith at gmail.com. 
Next Hangout will be on March 5th, 2016 at 10 a.m. Pacific.